Hey folks, Jonathan again. Uh, back to work on our steam engine here. Uh, or water pump, soon to be steam engine. Okay. A couple things. I made my my template from my plate. I just traced it out and then I, I put my slots where I wanted them. And uh, I'll put it up here where you can see what it's going to be like here. This close anyway. But uh, once I'm done making the plate, I will probably go in and machine the squares out in the in here just to make sure that you know it's taking advantage of the whole slot. And then again, we may not, but we'll see. But uh, one thing I do want to say: my hole going from here over really won't work out too well. And the reason being is is that where the cylinder's at, I'll never. I mean, I can get a hole in it, but I won't get. I don't think I could go down far enough to get it the way I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to machine a slot and uh, straight over. And as long as I'm, you know, far enough over on the uh, slot there, and that will uh, our plate will cover it, and that'll that'll let us get the exhaust out of there without having to drill a hole. And uh, I think that's a little better plan. And you know we got plenty of steel in, or cast in below that. I mean, the casting's good. So uh, we're gonna, I believe we're gonna do. Go ahead and uh, probably make our plate, and then we'll we'll machine that when we get get the plate done. So uh, what I've got here, I wish I had some co some uh, cold roll. I got hot roll, so and it's a little bit dirty. So we'll have to get it all cleaned up. But just a scrap piece of metal and. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be just wide enough for us to to make our plate we want and uh, this is not 16 gauge it's a little bit thicker probably 14 maybe and uh, but we're going to trace our plate out and then we'll cut it out here on the bandsaw and then we'll have to probably just drill our drill the holes for the slots we might machine them but we can drill them and then uh, dress them out with a file to get them the way I want them and uh, and we'll get that and. I'll show you more here in a few minutes. Okay, we got our plate cut out and uh, we have marked our our slots in it. And I'll just take a center punch and punch a couple of holes and then uh, we'll just drill them out. We'll do a little fouling around it, a little grinding around it, but I mean it's it's fairly close to what I what I want. This is not an art project anyway, so not a big deal. Uh, I did want to mention one thing. I know, of course, you see my thumb and probably see it in about every video. And, you know, the old saying that sticks out like a sore thumb, well, you can definitely catch it real quick. But uh, just a, a couple months ago, I, I didn't smash my thumb. I actually crushed it. And uh, the thumbnail's, you know, slowly growing back. But, uh, but I, I lost, the, lost the end of it or the thumbnail all the way, but I crushed the end of the, my bone inside and it healed up finally. But, uh, but if you, you know, happen to notice it, which I'm sure everybody does, because it sticks out like a sore thumb, but you know the reason behind it now. And, uh, and I've been lucky over the years not getting hurt, so I guess uh, I had that one coming, I guess. But uh, anyway, we'll get back on this and get them cut out and I'll show you shortly. Okay, we got the slots cut out in the plate, and uh, now I'm going to mark for where I need to mill our slot over to. But uh, uh, the opening's not too bad. I've got it, you know, right on one of the ports. So we might just leave it like that. Uh, this is probably way more opening for a valve than this little engine needs, I'm sure. But I'm hoping that too big a valve won't hurt. But uh, I think that'll that'll do us. Now go ahead and mark, and I'll set this up and machine that slot. Show you shortly. Well, it looks like I was wrong about the uh, the thickness down there. We got a cavity down there. Now we just got to figure out where it goes to. And I'm not sure. So I guess we'll. Uh, let me see. 
this is just a hollow casting, which I don't know how they would have gotten the sand out, but well, I guess we can blow some air down through it or some smoke through it or something and see if it comes out anywhere. Uh, not quite sure what's going on there, but uh, it's thin. We'll get it. We'll get it figured out here, and then I'll let you know. Okay, I put some tape over the hole and put a hole in it, put a straw down in it, and blowed some smoke down in there. And it seems like this is just a uh, a cavity in there and it don't go anywhere. So how they got the sand out, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I didn't see any plugs, but we're going to leave it set up here. I'm going to go ahead and mill a little bit more. And uh, so, I'll have, you know, just have adequate, adequate flow through there. And then uh, we'll be able to see it a little better too. And... I'll check it out some more when I get it off the uh, off the uh, mill, mill machine here. Give me just a minute. Okay, we figured it out. Uh, this sleeve that's in this cylinder, it's uh, copper, crimped on each end. And I guess what they've done is casted this and it's hollow in there. And then the, the sonar runs through there. So I don't see anything that's going to hurt. Uh, it's just going to be exhaust gases from you know, the low pressure side coming out of it. So I think we're still okay. I uh, don't see it as being a problem. Uh, wasn't expecting it, but uh, I had assumed it was solid. And I, I, I know if it's an enclosed cavity and it's sand casted, there's no way of getting the sand out. So, so that's what it was, was before this sleeve was put in. You know, it's actually hollow up inside of it. So, uh, and we may not be able to get that sleeve out. If not, I've got an idea on what we're going to do on these holes to fill them in. But, uh, but we do have this slot cut. So. That'll work out really good. And uh, it'll still exhaust out of here, so that's that's exactly what we wanted. So I, I reckon nothing's really changed. Uh, and let me explain a couple of little things here to you. Uh, the reason I made these the width I made them, the reason I kept them as close together as I did. Uh, the sliding valve, you know, needs to have some room in here. I don't need it to be up against the walls or hitting. And actually, it sort of moves around in there some, but that's the reason for for keeping these holes at the inside instead of out here. And uh, and I, I can't make my sliding valve or my D valve until I, you know, know my distance between here because it's got to be able to cover these two holes at the same time, and then. Uh, actually slide and cover these two holes at the same time and then uh, so now the way we're going to mount this uh, we're going to end up drilling and tapping probably eight bolts small ones and uh, what we'll do is I've, I've got to decide how I'm going to build our our chest itself we don't need any bolts in this and it's low pressure side you know there's nothing to build pressure there so it's just going to come out and of course we will make a gasket for this when we're done uh, you know we, what we really need now is a wall you know maybe inch tall three quarter inch inch tall you know enough for our uh, devout to to have adequate room in there and uh, around the perimeter of this and then you know we'll have our top cap on it but uh and we've got to remember we've got a rod that's got to come in so we need to uh you know keep that into account when it comes to wall thickness and stuff and then if we put this around the perimeter uh we should be able to still get our eight bolts in and we can go through the whole stack together uh weld the piece on the perimeter uh make it thick and make a gasket for it i mean there's a million different ways of doing it. I, I sort of like to weld. I think I will uh, probably end up welding it. When I weld it, I'll probably bend it around it, you know, tack it, tack it all the way around. We don't want to make a lot of heat because we don't want to warp this plate anymore. You know, 
or any if we can but uh, we'll get it sealed up to where it can't uh, leak any air or steam or whatever we end up using on this but uh, it would be nice if this one of these is turned a little more than the other and makes it line up a little different which I can go down through there with a Dremel or something and, and clear them out but I don't know that it you know needs it but we may do it before it's over with and uh, but that's what we've got so far uh, I'm gonna go look in the scrap pile here for something to to band around it to make our our wall for our steam chest and then uh, of course we'll maybe use another plate like this for the top side of the steam chest uh, this is uh, it's actually 16th inch is what it is on the money I measured it and, uh, and I think that's 14 gauge I, don't be don't hold me to that because I'm not sure but I can't keep up with all of them especially in my old age but uh, We'll get something for the perimeter and we'll get back on it. Okay, I found me uh, a couple pieces here. And uh, one inch, uh, about an eighth inch, I think. And I'll have to grind them down and clean them off. But I got this 25 uh, time press break here. We'll uh, see if we can't bend us a couple of corners here. Okay, what we can do now is set these up on here and uh, we'll go to the other side, a little more light here. And uh, cut them off where they need cut off and that'll just give us, you know, weld on each corner. And uh, we got, of course, we got to get all that paint cleaned off of them, but that should work out really good. That'll give us a, plenty of room for for a valve in there. So I'm gonna get it, get to cleaning them up and get them cut and ready to tack together, weld together.